it's uh, good to meet and see all of these uh, great implementations of IPFS. Uh, Daniel, I'm pretty new to uh, PL and uh, IPFS. I mean, I worked with it on the other side some years ago as a developer and uh, now sort of coming onto this side as a developer advocate, um, I have a, I guess, a fresh and naive perspective. And so uh, the goal with Ospina was to really um, learn about the IPFS stack, uh, the protocols, the specs, bit swap, uh, some of the broader specs that we have in the ecosystem, like the pinning API spec and uh, the Go libraries, and to explore the space of trade-offs. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, Dietrich's talk uh, demonstrated how we want to get IPFS into so many different runtimes, and, uh, you know, it's always a game of trade-offs. Um, and so I wanted to get a better feel for that and maybe uh, uh, be able to then bring that back to also the broader IPFS community. Um, and of course, I wanted to build something useful um, and explore this idea of like a short-lived light IPFS node, so something that sort of has a short lifetime. Um, and so to sort of move on into what actually or spinner is, I think it's a good uh, starting point to start uh, with this question of uh, what do all of these have in common? Does anyone, can anyone guess maybe? Yeah, something a bit more specific? Yes, pinning API server um, spec. So yeah, we have this great uh, pinning service API spec. Um, and the great thing about this is that it offers great interoperability between the different uh, services. So you know, they might actually implement a slightly different HTTP API, uh, but because they adhere to the spec, um, the uh, HTTP API that adheres to the spec, um, is the same across all implementations. Um, and we have actually discovered that there's some deviations. There's uh, great work by Russell in actually checking the compliance of each of these services. Um, but now that we have this compliance check uh, and we have a Swagger API, uh, we can build all of these great tooling that works with all of these different services and uh, give IPFS users more options. Um, and so, how does OSPINA work and what does it actually do? Essentially, it allows you to uh, take a car file and then pin that onto um, a pinning service. So it takes a car file's input, um, makes an HTTP request. Hopefully, the pinning uh, service will give back uh, some delegates to connect to. And then it basically starts a loop P2P host, connects to those delegates, um, and uh, makes the blocks available over BitSwap. Uh, there's a little demo here. It's uh, one minute, so I'll just just to get a feel um, for what it's like. So you can list um, the pins that you have, and here I'm actually making a pin request. So it made the HTTP request. The status is queued. Uh, it connected to the delegates, and then it sort of tracked the state. And now we can see that we have this Rocky Road pin. Um, and then now I'm just getting the uh, token for Piñata, and I'm basically doing the same thing with Piñata. So pinning the same file, Piñata and Estuary, they're both returning um, delegates. I've spoken to some of the uh, dot .storage team, and I know you're uh, uh, going to return the delegates soon. So, um, And there we have it. So it's uh, waiting for the blocks to be transferred. And hopefully that will complete. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so that was it. And you can obviously also delete uh, pins. So that was it. And um, those were some of the libraries that I used for this. Um, and finally, I, I, so this was obviously a learning journey for me. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, you know, not all of the pinning services returns delegate, return delegates, which makes it tricky because the only alternative you have is to pass origins. And if you have a short-lived OSPINner instance that just starts a new lib P2P host, it's probably behind that or a firewall. So that means it's not uh, publicly reachable, so you have to do... Um, UPnP, or you have to do hole punching with circuit relay. Um, and so I got uh, UPnP working, but then that sort of breaks this idea of this being a short-lived instance because, well, you have to wait for the router to give you, uh, uh, to do the port mapping. Another thing that was a bit tricky was tracking the pinning progress. So basically you have a, a status that you get from the HTTP uh, API and you can just pull the API 
uh, and wait to see that the status uh, changed. Um, that felt a bit coarse, but that's how it's doing it. Um, and if you're obviously doing a big file, then uh, you know that's not ideal because you can't know how far along you are. Um, and so uh, I did an experiment using the bandwidth counter um, to basically measure the uh, uploaded bytes uh, over the basically the lib P2P uh, host. Um, and yeah, and there's some sort of different ideas uh, about how to sort of make this maybe a bit more versatile. Uh, I did a, a session with uh, Joro Po uh, on basically taking a file and then Unix FSing it, I guess that's the word. Yeah, basically chunking it and turning it into a UXFS um, uh, representation or maybe using Go IPLD uh, Prime. And uh, as I mentioned, better progress tracking. And if you have any ideas for how this could be a bit more uh, versatile and usable, um, uh, I'd love to hear your ideas. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, it's been a great learning journey, and uh, thank you to everyone who helped. Uh, I think we have uh, a lot of different IPFS implementations, and it's really like cool to see this uh, uh, the discussion around what even is IPFS kind of like expanding as we explore this space. So thank you.